Hey everybody. So today we're going to be looking at an out of box from out of fruit. They're like a four times a year subscriber kit. That's usually around project building, electrical engineering type stuff, circuitry, coding, STEM, the good stuff. They come in these fancy little boxes here. Oh, camera doesn't like that. And this one has been on delay for years since COVID product shortages, that kind of stuff. But what we're dealing with today is a little camera. And we're going to have a closer look at that. So here is the box and I'm going to fiddle faddle around trying to get my fingers in there and uh, open this thing. I do like this little cover sheet. They're always pretty classy. They give each one its own unique flair. That information can be found on the box's webpage. I'll have it in the description below. Here is some amazing paper they love to include. I have a hard time throwing it away. So we'll see, it comes with a little figure, but uh, most importantly, there's the memento itself. A little LED cover plate. The aforementioned figure, which outside messing around, I have no use for this thing, but it's a nice inclusion. Here is a little neoprene case and some of the finer hardware. A back plate, some adhesive foam strip, and some horrible acrylic fasteners. Oh, and a whopping 256 megabyte switch for this camera is stellar. Here's the business end, a 5 megapixel sensor and an ESP32, I believe it is. Not the most familiar with these things at this point in time, but... And we'll take that little cover off there. You can see where the battery is supposed to lay down there. Here's the battery, as you'll notice I forgot in the box. It is indeed a 420 milli or, yeah, milliamp hour cell. Here's the little foam adhesive pad, and I've fast forwarded my struggles. Kind of just have to brute force it onto a bunch of stuff there. Not the biggest fan of that. Realized in hindsight I was pushing on it, and there's that ribbon cable in there, so make sure you get it set a little bit more carefully than I did if you get one of these. One thing that I wasn't expecting is that it would uh, turn itself on at the moment, but really no harm, no foul. So I got pretty lucky here and just happened to mount this thing the correct direction. But yeah, keep note of that. And here are those awful little plastic fasteners. And me struggling big time. So they've included some plastic not stacked and spacers between the uh, screen side and this plate. So you gotta install those first and then mount the plate to the camera itself and you'll be all good. And that's uh, all she wrote right there. Let me get a quick overview of the layout here. Time for the standard annoying micro SD card installation. Make sure the little gold fingers are pointed downwards towards the circuit board. So 
So if you power it on here up on the top, you'll see the included uh, little demo version that comes pre-flash to the camera. At this point I have no idea what I'm doing and then I slowly realize that up and down it is changing the resolution of the picture to be taken. So here I discovered the basic effects as you can see. I think red, blue, green, or maybe sepia to start out with, invert. I'm not sure solarizes in this version, but Now I did take a photo here, but I think in flashing CircuitPython to it, it wiped the SD card. I headed on over to the Adafruit site and grabbed the uh, UF2 file for this board. I just followed the uh, green button there. The blue button I didn't have to do, it was present when I installed it. Grab this UF2 file. And then here in a second, you'll want to also get to this page and download that project bundle there. At this point, you'll want to plug it in with a USB-C cable to your computer. And uh, they suggest double tap on the reset button. You'll see a green light. And then if you hit it again, you'll see a purple light temporarily. Hit it. See the purple? Hit it right then. There, go to my PC, look for the camera boot drive, and in here you'll end up dragging the UF2 file. I don't remember, but I think it needed to be reset at this point for CircuitPython to take over. Now that CircuitPython is installed, you'll see it show up here in my PC, and you'll want to go back to your downloads and get in this camera folder. If you dig down, you'll see this multiple choice option. I went with the 9.x. Is drag this onto your CircuitPy drive root folder. We're going to have a quick look at a few of the modes. So here is a janky GIF, 1.2 seconds. Here's the various resolutions of my little 3D printed astronaut here. And we'll run into an issue since I'm rendering this one at 1080. A few of them are larger than that. Here we have some effects, and you can use these across the majority of the modes from what I've seen. Game Boy mode represents a Game Boy camera, which side story real quick. I actually had one of those, and it was stolen by a friend, painted black with Sharpie, and sold to another supposed friend. There's also a stop motion mode that has a ghost or onion skinning effect. This will keep a faint transparency that allows for easier setting up of stop motion. So on power up, there's a nice little boot menu or a bio screen that I appreciate, but uh, here we are, and it just dumps you into photo mode pretty quick. It's decent startup time, so you could use it to potentially grab pictures faster than some other devices. I don't know, I think my phone's probably about as fast, but... Here we have the uh, front light, which is a pretty good idea given that it has terrible low light uh, sensitivity, but... Damn bright is what they are, and you get a full uh, RGB kind of color spectrum going on here. You're trying to list the uh, resolutions, but that just didn't capture for shit. Rolling through the effects in uh, out of focus mode. And here, jump through the modes, and mostly just getting confused and lost on the time lapse settings. So uh, that was my review of the little memento 
camera from Adafruit. Something I didn't know I wanted or needed. It does seem like a fun little device to play with. I can't have, uh, or I can't wait to have some fun with time lapses and that kind of shit. We got a GoPro-ish knockoff SJ cam. I don't use it that often, but more hoping to change that in the coming days or weeks or months. But uh, thanks for watching this uh, first time review of such a weird little device, and I hope you stick around.